Hey friends, welcome to the Town Hall Academy, episode 151. Now three of your industry peers speak to the power of their marketing reach as we talk about dominating your market and owning the two-mile zone. So if you're not good at marketing, you need to hire a marketer. If you're not good at talking to people, hire somebody who is. You know, attitude trumps talent all day long. Welcome, automotive aftermarketers, to a Remarkable Results Radio Town Hall Academy. Listen to learn just one thing from today's episode on your journey to remarkable results. Hey friends, Carm Capriato, the Automotive Aftermarket Podcast Guy, and so glad to welcome you to Academy Episode 151. And I want to thank my sponsors, Jasper Engines and Shopware, for keeping the lights on for this very powerful asset to the aftermarket. You know, no other tool can transform your business like your management system. Shopware's leading shop management system is helping shops like yours generate more profit per ticket and get more efficiency from their staff. Get a free demo from Shopware at shop-ware.com to find out all about it. Hey, you know, performance and reliability, that's what Jasper's remanufactured diesel engines provide mile after mile. Their running completed engines are dynamometer tested with horsepower and torque ratings recorded. And there's even a nationwide warranty included too. Talk about dependable service, jasperengines.com. Hey, join my crusade to get more aftermarket professionals turned on to this podcast's treasure of wisdom. Now, each show is found separately on your preferred listening app. Now, you'll need to subscribe to all three shows. That is the Town Hall Academy, for the record, and Remarkable Results. They had always been in the single stream. Now, mark them all separately and as favorites. It's a big advantage you're going to have because you'll have more episodes in each show format to listen to. Hey, you know, the availability of the podcast worldwide engages more aftermarket pros to listen. So could you do me a favor? Share this episode. I'm confident that your friend will appreciate it. So if you see one of my social posts, share it on your network or even share this listening app. Now, welcome Sue Morshing from Elysian Auto Service in Elysian, Minnesota, Heather DePriest, American Garage, Chinook, Montana, and Brian Gossel, BG Automotive, Fort Collins, Colorado. Hey, this episode is packed and they brought their A game with a ton of marketing wisdom. Hey, today, if you don't really concentrate on marketing, your business and your growth will suffer. You know, customers leave, they die, they move away. You always need to nurture new relationships. And today, that takes a carefully planned and deliberate strategy of social engagement, web presence, and community all wrapped up in real-world organic content. Hey, improve your 2020 with these great marketing tactics. Hey, everyone. It's 12 noon East Coast time. Carm Capriato, Town Hall Academy, the summit for the forever automotive aftermarket student. It's always such a great time of the year. And I had a chance to look back just the other day at, uh, at so many of the topics we covered this year. If you haven't gone back in the catalog, you owe yourself, especially at this time of the year. We're talking about 2020 and all the, the great things that we need to do to, to plan and become resolute to running a better business and becoming a better leader. Hey, with me is Heather DePriest from American Garage in Chinook, Montana. Hello, Heather. Hi, how are you? Good to have you here. Sue Morshing from Elysian Auto Service in Elysian, Minnesota. Merry Christmas, Cam. And Brian Gossels here from BG Automotive, Fort Collins, Colorado. Yes, sir. Nice to see you here, ladies. And and Brian, we're going to talk about dominating your market and trying to own that two-mile zone. I believe you weren't born on this earth to be a master marketer. I would agree with that. No. You would agree with that. And these are the <laughs> things that you can constantly learn. So, Brian, um, you have this great thought about uh, businesses close by. Uh, did you ever consider the gym you go to as a as an opportunity to to grow your business? Absolutely. I mean, I I try to hit the gym every day except for Thursday with Bible study. But I I wear BG Automotive attire and just start talking to people. I love talking, um, and it opens up avenues to different conversations. And then one thing leads to another, you know. And people are like, oh, where's your shop at? You know, and oh, we're just two blocks away, right over here. 
and they always ask questions and want to know how much. And I've had to change myself because I don't know how much stuff costs anymore. So you got to get them to call and let the team take care of them, get them to come that way or a great fleet customer. You know, there's a lot of, we're in an industrial park. So you get a lot of employees or owners working out there and you start talking to them and build relationships. And the next thing you know, they're coming to your shop. So you're hanging out at the gym, meeting new people. What a great idea. So you're getting healthy and yep. meeting, meeting uh, friends. Heck yeah. And they do become friends. I mean, uh, you see them out, you always want to be, that's our you know, main thing is to, they're not customers, they're guests, or they become friends or family. I, I say hello to people on the, on the treadmill and, you know, on the, on the elliptical and, and anywhere at the gym when I'm there. But, of course, I don't wear a logoed shirt because not many people are going to ask me, oh, well, let me listen to your podcast, you know, when, when it's specific to the niche of the automotive aftermarket. But, yes, you're right. One of the things that seems to be so great is the, is the, the friendliness of the, the people at your gym. They, they just, yep. there, there's, a, there's a bond there. Absolutely, there is. I mean, you get to work out and you see the same stuff. I've thought of switching gyms. My wife has been on me to go to her gym, but it's, you know, 20 minutes away from our shop. And I'm like, man, I like her gym. I'll go there sometimes on the weekend. But I'm like, I got my my core people that I go and have built relationships with. You kind of don't want to mess that up. So you also get a a chance to, to meet people anywhere and everywhere that you go. Absolutely. And so is it, is it important that you're always wearing a logo shirt or a hat or something? I always do. You know, I mean, normally even going to dinner with my wife, you know, I mean, she's sporting BG attire. We always do because we're proud of what we are. So why not support it? And, you know, there's coffee shops close by wherever you go, always hand out cards. If you're a business owner and don't have a business card on you, uh, shame on you. Shame on you. I'm going to dig my hand in my pocket and I'm going to pull out my business card. I just want everyone to know that I uh, I agree to your philosophy, Brian, that you should always, always have a business card with you. Sue, uh, you love to bring out the red carpet for customers. And, and, and I think what we should understand is owning the two-mile zone could be a five-mile zone or a 10-mile zone. It's It's really... Uh, I, I just want people to realize that you need to own your customer base and your relationships, and you need to do more with that relationship than just "thank you very much, goodbye, I hope I see you again" type of transaction. Yes, we have a calendar that we keep track of. We do large cookies in a clear cellophane bag that every customer gets one in three months out of the year. We do car coasters. We do candy. We do different themes throughout the year. Um, so there's always a little something special in the vehicle. And in Minnesota, you have to be a little careful not to make sure it's not going to melt in the summertime. But we always leave something in the vehicle. So when they get inside the car, there's something extra in their car. We always try to, if, if it's, you know, move the loaner car to next to their vehicle so they can transfer their goods. We always try to go the extra mile. We have suckers in the waiting room for all the kids, adults, whoever would like them. We always try to make everyone welcome. Everyone feel like we know who they are. We communicate with them. And the majority of our customers, we do know by name. There's a, a profound thought that everyone needs to understand about Sue's business. The town, 750 people. We're working on reaching that million dollar sale this year and um, it's all possible. You just need to work on your car count. And we also market to the surrounding towns around us. So I know which towns are the best that I'm getting the most customers from and try to help advertise over there, do things for the school, do things for the community, which really helps us. It's it's amazing. I want everyone to realize, uh, I can't do that. I mean, you live in a town of 200 thousand and twenty thousand whatever sue's knocking on the million dollar door with 750 now let me say i I had a chance to speak uh, to sue earlier this week and we were chatting about that and one of the things that i said in the in the two mile zone in concept it's the next towns for you right correct and they're like how far away one of them is five miles away one's 11 miles away and the other one's nine miles away and I have to stay active in those communities enough in order to get enough vehicles. And like Brian, I'd love to have his population. I mean, I would be overjoyed. However, you're knocking it down and you're doing it. 
and you're doing everything that a quote-unquote big city-style place with all that concentration of business would do. In fact, you probably realize you have to do it even better. I do believe in the logo, wearing the logos, but I, I went with a grandma theme. All, my grandkids are in front of the postcards every time. So anyone that is my customer always comes in, wants to know how the twins are doing, what are they up to. So they always have the logo closed on. And there's also a picture of Carl and myself. So they were building the family bond. It's not just the business, but we are a family. We're grandparents. We have children. And so all, our cards are based off of our grandkids, our shop. So we got a new lift. So I put the grandkids on the lift with little blue Elysian Auto sweatshirts on and they had suckers in their hand. And um, so we build off the family theme. And the last week we were chatting on the Town Hall Academy about a few things. And one of the ideas that came up was organic. Did I say that right? Organic. And um, it was looking, look around you. In this crazy digital world that we're in, there's an opportunity to be analog and that is, I've got grandkids. The world needs to know about them. We, we love them. Heather, you guys look for organic opportunities in your marketing? We do. Um, it's, it's a big part of our market where we live. Our town has about 1,200 people in it. So we're very similar to Sue's size. And so you, you do. You struggle trying to get the, the customer base in. One of the things that helps us is we have two communities exactly 20 miles on each direction of us. Um, so that's a benefit to us, but it is, it's, it's hard to, to gain those new client base when you do have a small town. I love the fact that Heather and Susan are in small towns. You're running successful businesses. You've got the, the five or six mile zone, Susan, with, within yours, but Heather, you have 20 miles between towns? Correct. It's very remote here in Montana. Um, we're in a very rural agricultural area. And so it's hard to, you know, to market to those areas, but, but you do what you have to do. And people will drive and will come to where they know they're going to get taken care of honesty, integrity, trust. Yes. We actually have customers that come all the way from a community that's about 70 miles from us. Um, we, we get some out of Canada. Um, we're right on the Canadian border. So, you know, we, we do see some of that as well. And now that the exchange is not as favorable for the Canadians, then we aren't seeing as many, but we do see some still. Okay, let's go down with you, Heather, what you use. Uh, Facebook, mailers, Google reviews. Talk to me about that. My number one tool is Facebook. I constantly post on Facebook. I, I feel that, you know, even the older generation client base, even those are still using the Facebook campaigns that we're using. And so I like to, I like to promote to everyone that way. I can do it with, you know, jokes. I can do it with what we have going on. Um, we also sell used cars. So I, I put our used vehicles on there. Um, yeah, we, we use social media quite heavily here. Ever use the phone to reach out to customers? Yes, we do. We are constantly calling and following up with our client base. We're making sure that everything went well with their repairs. We're sending out text messages asking for you know, their opinion, their reviews. Uh, we do email blasts. We, we do mailers. Yeah, we, we do all of it. Cool. You know, Brian, to be found when people search, you know, in, in a big community like you, uh, you know, best automotive service in Fort Collins, you've got to work that Google AdWords hard, don't you? We do quite a bit. And we have a lot of competition. And they're actually more allies, not so much competition, but they still are in that aspect. It's competition. And I know what some of the other guys are spending and they're doing it differently because I'm friends with them. And, uh, there are some of them we're doing it organically, but we do a lot of Google AdWords and it's all, um, I'm not smart enough to do that myself. So I do hire another company to manage our Google AdWords mm -hmm. for us. And we set the budget and I monitor it and track it through our dashboard on Kikui. And I mean, our ROI on that is phenomenal. I mean, it's earth shattering every time I talk to my um, Kikui rep. And your ROI shows in your top line. Oh, hundred percent. 100%. I mean, you can track it. Um, that's a cool thing about Kikui is they go into our point of sale R writer and track it down to, it's scary how much information you can get. Like, oh man, they liked your page to their favorites. You know, it's like, holy moly, big brother's always watching, but um, utilizing and dominating and spending money wisely. You know, I agree with the Facebook thing. Google AdWords is huge. Um, Google my business, posting stuff. 
And there again, I'm not good at some of the posting. So Phil, my right hand man, he does a lot of the response because he's really good with words um, in responding to stuff, responding to all the reviews. I mean, I think we're at 460 some Google reviews right now. And that's really pushing and asking and setting it up at the beginning of the drop with the customer to ask for the review. You know, you want to provide five-star service and I'm going to ask you for a review at the end of my service. If I provided you five-star service, would you be willing to go on Google, Yelp, Facebook and leave me a review? And you got to ask for it. You got to ask for it. What's your percentage of getting it? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't track it. I just keep pushing. Um, okay. And, so on an average week, you realize how many jobs you did. You have a chance to see the reviews uh, coming in of the, for the last couple of weeks. Usually it's probably... It's got to happen soon. It can't. It can't be a lag. Yes, and we do have a. So we're asking for it, and then we also are texting and emailing a link to ask for the review too, um, to help. So I mean, there's several steps to the process, you know, because just asking it for it, some people are like, oh, but you got to streamline it, make it easy for them. So you're texting out a, hey, would you do this for us? Yep. What software are you using? I'm using Business Axle Jasons for one of our stores, and Kikui for the other two. Cool. Yeah, Three-store oper- operations. Uh, what, what's really interesting is but just before we, we got on, you said, hey, listen, the flagship store is, we're solid here. And, you know, my two stores require a little marketing. And, uh, and you're finding a few, not necessarily challenges, but having to put your marketing hat back on. Absolutely. I mean, we've been truly blessed at our flagship store not to really have to market. It's organically grown to what it is today. Um, and the other two stores are totally new and they were both different. One of them I'm allowed to use the name for two years. The other one, we bought the real estate and that's it. So we started from new phone number, new everything and learning how doing postcards. I've done postcards at both these stores and one of them, it tanked and didn't really do anything. And the other store, I mean, it's more than paid for itself and generated a bunch of new customers and revenue to where it's, uh, definitely the ROI is great and the other one it wasn't. So just learning the market and it's like, holy cow, why did that not work, you know? Hey, Carm here. Now think about your shop management system. Isn't it the center of your business? And most of us are running on systems that are decades old and you know who you are. It's time to change and get the benefits that a modern system can bring to your business. Shopware Shop Management is a cloud-powered management system that gives your staff and your customers the end-to-end digital experience that they expect. With Shopware, you can see every job and view work updates in real time. And you can manage your shop from anywhere with any device. And that's becoming more important than ever. You'll see your customers interact with digital work orders and buy services from you more often with less effort. You can earn more parts profit with just the click of one button and with less paper, too. You'll also get improved efficiency from your staff. Do this. Request a live tour of Shopware at shop-ware.com. Look, it's time to make the switch and get started making more money with a powerful modern business tool designed to solve your biggest challenges. If your customer has a vehicle they like, they shouldn't have to get rid of it because the engine, transmission, or differential failed. You know, because you and your customer know the vehicle maintenance, there's no reason they can't keep it on the road. Depreciation, license, insurance, interest, add them all up and they'll probably total more than it would cost to install a remanufactured product from Jasper Engines and Transmissions. Personal finances only go so far. Daily living expenses, college for the kids, and as we all hope, retirement. So before your customer rushes out to buy a new or a newer used vehicle because their engine or transmission has failed, contact Jasper and find out how a remanufactured product from Jasper Engines and Transmissions can extend the life of your customer's present vehicle for an amount much less than the higher expenses that come with a vehicle trade. Give their vehicle a new lease on life with Jasper. So you're a believer that we need to hire out if we're not good at it, but you can't abdicate the responsibility. You still have to be involved in it so that you have a learning curve, but yet you're not going to pull every lever lever and dot every I. Explain to the audience um, that level of responsibility and why you decided to go outside for stuff. I mean, I know my weaknesses. 
for dang sure. You know, I don't, I don't like reading a lot. So spelling, I suck at spelling, you know, and knowing your weaknesses and what you're not good at. So finding somebody to partner with that'll help you where you're at, you know, and let's say you're a business owner and you're a grumpy Gus, you're not going to go to the gym and get people to come if you don't say hi to people. So you, if you're, you know, hire an outside salesman, that's going to go do that for you. If you're not good at it, hire somebody that's better at it than you. I mean, I, like I'm definitely not the smartest person in the room, so you don't want to be. And partnering with the proper people, you know, like Kikui. I mean, I still have my minimum monthly phone call with Kathy. And I mean, we talk, go over everything and we tweak and we do stuff. Um, just to make sure we're doing stuff right and having Phil who's phenomenal at wording things and responding to reviews. You know, when you get a bad review, bad reviews are not bad, you know, um, they can definitely turn into positive things. Some, no matter what, you know, you're going to make some people not happy because you charge them too much. And yeah. if that's all they can say is, Oh, they were too expensive. Well, we're really sorry. You know, um, we might not be the shop for you. And then, refer them to another shop if that's what they want. Very smart that you've uh, you've gone outside. Do you send pictures that you take organically in your community or your shop to your uh, service? Absolutely. Um, that's another feels really good at that. We're taking pictures and doing it on Facebook and Google and getting them, you know, to the website and taking relevant and then also getting you know, make it fun, make it a challenge with your salesman. Be like, hey, who can get the first video and you have the customer use their own phone and post it. Per- I mean, have fun with the cool. stuff because yeah. I mean, life's too short. We need to have fun at what we're doing. Stop being institutional is what you're saying and be <clears throat> be down home. Yeah. And I, now that I say that, I owe one of my guys a hundred bucks because they got the, I did a challenge for like whoever can get the first customer video post it up. I'm going to give them a hundred bucks, you know, and if they're listening, I'll get you the hundred bucks at our Christmas party tonight. (laughs) I see you shaking your head, Heather. Yes. I strongly believe in that. I mean, keeping it lighthearted on social media will gain you more followers than posting constantly about what you're selling, what you're doing, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Having that fun aspect really appeals to people. It makes them engage in what you're doing and it works well. <laughs> so many of us in the industry know Greg Buckley um, and Greg just had his first grandchild and it's a granddaughter. And, you know, and I follow Greg and like 10 times a day, I'm seeing Greg with the granddaughter or the doing something. And and th- that's basically on his on his page for for the shop. So you talk about an organic engagement with the audience in a life-changing moment. Wow. Any uh, great stories like that, Susan? Totally what we do. We have the Hercules tire guy out back and the grandkids are out there and we're out there with them. And anytime the grandkids come into the shop and we have a nice set of wheels, they're like wheeling them around the shop, getting their pictures and they're two little girls. So breaks for breast cancer. They're all in pink with their logos. They got pink little cars. They're in the daisy fields getting their pictures taken. And we started just on a whim. Every Friday we have donuts. So we decided we'll have donut Friday. So whenever the customers come in, it's donut Friday. Some people just stop in for donuts otherwise. And then we get their picture and we post it to social media and then people like it. And it's just we always bought the donuts anyhow, so let's make it a thing. So it's Donut Fridays at Elysian Auto Hours. So if you want a donut, stop in. I love it. You know, sometimes you'll stop in, in the back of your mind, you know there's going to be donuts there. And that's the reason you're there because you need to make an appointment. So why should I call? Why should I use the web? I'll just go by <laughs> and make an appointment and get my donut. And they have donut and coffee and visit for 10 minutes and they come back on Monday or Tuesday and it's all great. And the really cool thing about Sue's place is it's almost like having the pickle barrel in the small town, right? In the hardware store. Yes, we used to be a Conoco gas station and we were referred to as the Conoco Connection because everybody stopped to visit. So Sue, back to you. Um, You are big with your local schools. Yes, we work hard with our local schools. Um, my philosophy last year was you get so many asked for so many donations and which we do, but I decided to approach it to benefit myself and the organization. Instead of letting them ask for what they want, I decided to come up with my own. So I said to the volleyball team, I will do a fundraiser with you. I'll provide all the goods. 
you sell the foam fingers. One side says the name of the school and their logo and the other side has my logo on it. And the commitment was that I would donate all the foam fingers and they would give me two social media posts of the volleyball team or people with the foam fingers so that I could post to my website or Facebook, wherever. And then I really lucked out. They made it to state. So the foam fingers were everywhere. My logo was everywhere. And then I also did a dinner for them and they did Facebook Live, the girls did on their way to the state volleyball. And it literally costed me $375 and I got more advertising, more customers and a feel good in the community with the foam fingers. Don't you think, uh, Brian and Heather, that the feel good had, it was priceless? 100%. Oh, yes. Organic and real, you know, it's like, don't take pictures of open heart surgery, right? The doctors aren't posting pictures of open heart surgery on their website or their Facebook or whatever they're doing. So make it real and fun. Not like, hey, I got this cab off your truck and it's in five bazillion pieces. You just gave your customer a heart attack. We do something very, very similar um, with our school here in our small community. We give away bikes to all of the kids that have perfect attendance um, for the entire school year and then also no behavioral issues. And it seems as though that has, has really taken off as well. We, we usually give away between 10 and 20 bikes, depending on how many kids actually can do that. Um, and it works out pretty well. A lot, of, a lot of kids will send us thank you cards. We get these little cute little things in the mail from them. Um, we actually had our news station come and do an a, a interview with us on that as well. And, and they're about 120 miles from us. So that was kind of fun too. So we, we got some exposure out of it. I love what Susan said about being proactive and st- instead of just waiting for people to you know come down the road and and drop off the flyer and say we're looking for a hundred bucks for something that you have decided to pick uh, the programs or charities or uh, uh, what's the right word I'm looking for um, need yeah that 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 you want to sponsor and I think that's a great message to send to everyone be in you want to give but 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 be in control of it right. Right. And it definitely has helped. Like I asked her for the two pictures per week. And if I wouldn't have asked, I'm sure I went to receive them, but she was really good about it. And then there was a mix of people that I could post pictures of. One picture was the volleyball team and their moms. That picture was unbelievable. Then I got more followers, more likes, and it was easy. She sent me the picture. I posted it on my page and then the school started liking my page. And so it really did help grow my Facebook page and my social media. And I also posted that to Google. Anything I use on Facebook, I use on Google also. Have they done anything like that? We, we selected the bike scenario. That was something that uh, Scott's, my husband's uh, family member mentioned that they do that in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. And so I thought, oh, that'd be kind of a fun thing to do. Mm-hmm. So we approached the school. Um, it became a slight bit of an issue the first year or two because we had kids going to school six because they didn't want to not have perfect attendance and get a bike. So we had to kind of revamp it a little bit. It was it was kind of fun, but um, we ended up making it so any medical scenario was not an issue, um, you know, bereavement leave, that kind of stuff. So we have kind of some rules in place now. And then also, you know, we wanted the the attendance it was important, but we also wanted the behavioral side to be something that all these kids worked towards. And it's, it seemed to work pretty well. The school has seen a positive response from it. Cool. Hey, I want to remind everyone, Brian Gossel's with us from BG Automotive, Fort Collins, Colorado. Sue Morshing from Elysian Auto Service in Minnesota. And Heather DePriest from American Garage in Chinook, Montana. What gorgeous country in Montana. I, I want to go there one day. I just want to maybe take a train through Montana on the way to the West Coast. Um, Heather, um, DVIs, is that a competitive advantage? Very competitive advantage for us. Um, We are the only one in the area that offers the DVI. Um, We've been doing it for about two years now. And before that, you know, we were blown away when we found out what the DVI does for the customer. Um, and, and it's just amazing how many people come in our door and say, you know, I had a friend that, that got this thing on their phone that shows what they had wrong with their vehicle. We see that constantly. We are consistently getting people in the door wanting that specific inspection. What a wonderful baseline. It does help our, our business well. Are you guys all doing it? Yes. 100%. Yep. 
Cool. So let me ask a question of all of my experts here. Digital vehicle inspection. When I am told that from a customer, is the word digital just... Should, is it, does it necessarily have to be there? Although I know you're taking pictures, I know they're getting it on their phone. Does do, does that really have impact by saying the words digital, or could could there be a different, better word? I don't believe in this. I'm just challenging the think here. We call ours a courtesy check, a okay. complimentary courtesy check, and we wanted it that way more to alleviate away from the inspection scenario. The state of Montana does not require vehicle inspections, which I know some states do. Um, So we kind of wanted to get away from that because we didn't want people to be a little bit scared by it. Mm -hmm. So what we call ours are complimentary courtesy checks. Brian and Susan, are you you just staying with the traditional language? I honestly don't know what my guys are doing right now. (laughs) We definitely, uh, you know, the DVI or... um, email capture rate when the customer drops a vehicle off, like off in one of our stores is a hundred percent email capture rate. I just checked yesterday. The other ones are 89 and 86% email capture rate. Um, so utilizing that at the drop is like, Hey, we're going to do a complimentary no charge inspection of your vehicle. And we're going to go ahead and email and text you pictures. So we need to get your email address. Um, I don't necessarily say we're doing a digital vehicle inspection, right? right. but, we say we're going to do a no charge complimentary inspection on your vehicle and we need your email address so we can send you these pictures. We're using digital vehicle inspection and we do approach it as um, we're going to show you a comprehensive, everything the technician saw. And then it's, you know, basically red, green, yellow, whichever, you know, red is safety, yellow is at your own discretion and green is good. And then you can see the health of your vehicle. We go more after the health of the vehicle. Sorry, sorry to have brought this up. I think it does lend itself to our topic today. But uh, most recently on the show, we've been we've been hammering semantics of the language in our industry from diagnostics to testing, and 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 I just been thinking about the words digital and does it really mean anything to a customer? You know, maybe an e vehicle inspection, but again. I'm <laughs> I'm an observer of the industry and, and I'm impacted by what so many people tell me. So my job is to kind of push the think and, and ask some questions here. What do you think it should be called there, Carm? Oh, uh, an e-vehicle inspection. Yeah. Instead of digital. Because I, it, cause to me, digital sounds cable TV-ish. It sounds geeky and stuff. But, you know, the, every we grew up with the word E being in front of so many things, which means an electronic. So in some form or fashion, I'm going to get an email, I'm going to get a text. And uh, yeah, I guess it comes to me digitally. But is that really that, you know, and so... And, and again, I, I could be swayed uh, in a minute with a good argument. So <laughs> <laughs> how about vehicle health record or yeah yeah something like that doesn't matter how it health gets of your to someone. vehicle yeah. and a lot of people do what heather does you know they, they speak to that anyway there was a cool little side thought for us as we're talking about dominating your market and being a better marketer and try to own that two mile zone brian you had mentioned you know kakui is your website host um websites got to drive today Uh, people to you, right? 100%. I mean, normally, so they always say that you have three touch points. A lot of times it's word of mouth. You know, your neighbor tells you something or a friend or somebody at work says, hey, this is who I use. So there's one touch. And the first thing they're going to do is go on the internet and check you out. So if you have a crappy website, that's not responsive. It doesn't look good. It's clunky. They're going to be like, man, I don't know. Um, and then once, once you pass the website, social media review test, then they're going to call you. And if you suck on the phones, why would they come here? So, I mean, phones are just as important as your website. So, I mean, it's the whole package. The website is huge. You've got it. People are like, I get a lot of comments, man, your website looks cool. Um, it's got to be fun too. and not, Automotive, you know, they're again not totally automotive. No pictures of broke cars and stuff. I agree with that. I, I think it's important to have that presence online, not only in person, but also online because, you know, you have three seconds to sell them when they go to your website. And if it's not selling to them, then they're not going to buy from you. So you, you have to make sure that it's, it's something that you're working towards as a goal. 
I agree 100% on the website and your social media. You make sure that you have enough reviews out there. And phone is huge. We do, we have a phone script. And we also have exactly, you know, how it's supposed to go through for each customer to make sure that every one is getting treated the same. And if they want to drop off or if they want to, you know, to, so that we're accommodating the customer to make sure that if they have kids to pick up after school, that we have that vehicle done. We have a whole list to make sure that everything is handled on the phone properly so that customer gets the best customer service. So the web pictures that you have on your site are not something that was picked off of a photo service. It's of your place, right? 100%. We've talked about it on, uh, before, but, you know, with over 550 episodes on the podcast, I love to recycle what I believe are really critical and important if you will, strategies inside of our industry to never use a canned picture and always use, you know, if somebody takes a look at your website, wow, and they come in and it's not wow, you can't, you can't do that because right away there, there's a gap in trust and integrity because the place doesn't look like the place that's been described or shown on the web. Exactly. Mailers. You mentioned mailers in the beginning, Brian, and I know, Sue, you are into mailers and they're working for you. Mailers have been great for us. I track everything I do. If you're going to do any type of marketing, I track if the customer has one visit to up to four visits so that I know what are the most successful, if it's postcards, if it's emails, whatever marketing I do. And the postcards for us have been really successful, but I've done family-oriented I put my grandkids on there. I put my husband and myself on there. We put a picture of the building on there. And it's there's not a lot of car pictures ever. It's people. It's we're a family. Come visit us, our location. And we um, we do three a year because you're always going to have people move. People are going to pass away. People are going to, you know, so you have to be replacing those people and hopefully adding new customers and our count ha- car count has increased weekly by three cars this year. So I've been very happy with that. We do the same as well here. A lot of our postcards that we send out are for a special that we're offering or you know, a sale that we have. But we also include pictures of our building, of us, of our team, whatever that may be, just to make it kind of more of a family feel too. You know, so many shop owners... We're technicians, Brian, um, Heather, Sue, I'm not sure, you know, what your lineage or background is, but so many know how to talk car and they don't know how to talk people. And they, they're listening to this. Some of them may even be struggling because they know that they've got to drive a top line and a better image in, in their business, but they're just not made to do that. They'd rather be in the bay or hide in the office or, you know, it's, you just can't be out in front. Anybody have a recommendation as to how to overcome that? Man, I've definitely, I was a technician a hundred percent, but I also love talking to people. So now it's even gone another step. So I haven't worked on cars for three years now, probably. And I have, I mean, I may answer the phone once a year now. And now going to the CEO role, it totally, that's a whole nother dynamic. You got to figure out where you want to be and what you want to do and how to drive that. And I go back to the, if that's not what you're good at, you need to hire somebody who is and find that person. And it's not easy. It takes a lot of time to find that right key person. I've been truly blessed to have an amazing team, which it's been a long time building, you know, like I'll bring up my fill. Um, There's a funny thing. You got to have a Brian and Phil, you know, Brian Sump and Phil Carpenter and Brian Gossel and Phil Christensen. So you got to have a Brian and Phil. Um, But it took me two years of courting my Phil to where we actually sat down and talked to him. So, I mean, there's an ongoing process to finding the right people and it's still going today. So if you're not good at marketing, you need to hire a marketer. If you're not good at talking to people, hire somebody who is, you know, attitude trumps talent all day long. So that service professional right there on the counter has got to be a people person. 100%. I, that's, I truly believe in that. Well, I've heard stories about that. I have heard some incredible stories when they, the switch was made, um, how the business blossoms. Yep, yep. So like the two stores we just acquired this year, they were both technician-owned, run everything. And they were true 
technicians, you know, one was 62 years, 68 years old and the other one was 72. And they were, you know, wore out, tired, grumpy. I mean, just getting happy people in there. And so many people have said that. Wow. And I mean, we've already doubled the revenue they've ever done in history um, just by changing the processes and being happy and welcoming to people. That's one of the number one things people are saying is, wow, you're actually nice. Customer service is the key. I mean, in, in our community, we have to provide that level of customer service or you just don't get the people. I mean, you struggle with that. You know, if you have, if you have the grumpy grandpa that's in there that doesn't want to be there on a consistent basis, you're going to affect your car count. And so you have to make sure you're very careful with that in small community. I have another picture in my mind, grumpy grandpa. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for that, Heather. And and let me let me cover one more thing, Heather, that you guys do, and that is you offer pickup, drop offs, loaner cars. I mean, talk about it—a competitive advantage. It's a long ways to nowhere where we live. Um, so, with that being said, it's hard for people to get their vehicles to us. We are not located located right in the middle of like downtown. So where we're at, we're about a half a mile outside of the community. And so we have that consistent struggle with people wanting to know, well, can I get a ride? I need a ride back to town or I need a ride back to my house or work or whatever that may be. We saw that as an opportunity to help sell us a little bit. So we decided to get a loaner vehicle. So we do that. We offer people loaner vehicles. Um, so a lot of times they'll drop them, their car off and pick up the loaner vehicle, whether it's during business hours, sometimes even after hours. And um, we have a locking key box that we put keys in. So it works out pretty well for them. It doesn't have to be that hard for the customer to come and get their vehicle worked on. You want to make it easy for them. And that's where with our area here, it's so hard to get to anywhere. We made that as a major service. We also go get vehicles for customers as well. And we do the same. I say we need to be their transportation solution. Yes. We also do the same and it's been great for us. It's We have three loaner cars. We have a shuttle. We do pickup and delivery. So if you're working at the school, leave your car, leave the keys in it, give us the code. We'll pick it up, bring it back before school is over and your vehicle will be completed back in the same parking spot. And you can text to pay. So you will send you a message. You can pay on your phone. And it, the more convenient you can make it for the customer, you may be in a small community, but you can still have everything, if not more than the rest of them. Text to pay. I have an episode coming out within a couple of weeks on that. Go ahead, Heather. I just meant to say that, you know, it's not their favorite day when their car breaks. Mm -mm. Of course, you know, everybody is frustrated, mad when their car breaks, you know, especially if that's their only mode of transportation. So for us, it's making their life easier with that. It sure is. I enjoyed this. I want I want to do a summary. I want you all to have a final comment. And remember, we're speaking to people in the industry that are the CEOs, but they're not really good marketers. And and I and I know that they need to own their marketplace. They need to have that right public facing. They need to do things in their community. And and I I thought we covered this, um, you know. Smartly. Thank you so much for all of your great ideas. Brian, I'll start with you and, and let you, any any final thoughts maybe we didn't cover that you'd like to bring up? Totally, you know, me repl or hiring out things that I'm not good at, you still have, to, so like the canned pictures, like if you hire, you know, somebody to do your social media, your website, they're going to put canned pictures up there. So it's not just hiring that part out. You have to also have somebody in-house, whether you have a a child, a grandchild, or one of your teammates that is really good at taking pictures, to make it to where it's your shop would be huge. Don't get away from the canned stuff. Don't just, you can't autopilot everything. Well, that, that's, that's, uh, that's huge. We hear that all the time on the podcast. Please, uh, it, it can't be a generic picture and you've got to look around at the things that are going on in your world, in your life, in your shop. Take those pictures and send them up. Send them up yep. to who's ever doing that for you. Yep. Excellent. Sue, I'll give you your last word. I would recommend to everyone to have a marketing calendar and you're in charge of placing the marketing calendar, but if you need to delegate the work, but you need to have something weekly and you need to research your numbers from last year to this year and check out your slow months so that you have marketing in place. 
ahead of time. It's not something that just happens. You have to plan six weeks out to have things in place. And just remember to follow your marketing calendar and you have to try something. You're absolutely right. And I hear uh, you know, Frank Lloyds has been on the show before and and he has a marketing calendar that I think he shares with people. And um, it's so critical to know. I mean, you know, Valentine's Day is going to be on our doorstep here in a moment. But we're not thinking about that. And if you had the calendar created and you could actually, you know, even if you printed it nice and big or you had a whiteboard with it on it, then you're constantly reminding yourself as to what's coming up because you can't decide to promote something to do with Valentine's Day. However, you would promote it on the 13th of February is <laughs> something you don't want to do the day before, right? <laughs> so, Heather, I'll give you your last word. Yeah, well, I was actually going to touch on that. We are actually doing a Valentine's Day giveaway is what we're doing. And we, we've started our marketing on that already. Um, it's We're going to roll it out January 1st. And so we're going to give people enough time to participate in it. And we're going to do a break special. And if they participate in the break special, then they get entered into the drawing for an iPad. So, And that's wow. going to be given away the day before Valentine's Day. Wow. And those types of things work very well for us. We've done TVs. Um, we actually did diamond earrings last year. That was a lot of fun. So just anything you can do to get people to recognize, oh, hey, I can be entered into that. It, it does really help gain you new customer base. So the concept is, is they've, they've got at least, what, a month and a half to start participating and coming in and, and, and getting work done so they get entered. Correct. Yes. They have to participate in the breaks special that we're doing. We did not do the breaks for breast things in October. Um, it wasn't that we didn't uh, want to, we just didn't have time. And so now that that's over, we, we're not piggybacking on that, you know, so we're just trying to do a special. So we're going to do a special for breaks. Well, thank you. Uh, breaks for breasts near and dear to my heart and, and the team from over there. So thank you, Sue, for playing in that arena this year. It's a great thing. Breaks for Best is wonderful. Yes. Laura and those guys are great. Yep, yep. Um, it hit me. It hit me personally this year. So uh, it's it's near and dear to my heart. Look at. Um, thank you for being here on my show just before Christmas, uh, uh, Brian. Uh, Brian Gossel from BG Automotive in Fort Collins. Sue Morshing from Elysian Auto Service in. Minnesota and Heather DePriest, American Garage in Chinook, Montana. Thank you so much for your contributions. And, and hopefully we have shaken the tree a little bit and, uh, and, and brought some great marketing concepts, ideas, and thoughts to the industry. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Merry sure. Christmas. Thank you and Merry Christmas. Same, same, same. Thanks for being on board to listen and learn from the premier automotive aftermarket podcast. Until next time. 